everyone, this is Jamie back again and welcome back to my channel. In this vlog, we are going to talk about how to pass biochemistry. So if you guys are interested in that, then keep on watching. So if you guys are new to my channel, I am JB, an incoming second year medical student from St. Luke's Medical Center, College of Medicine, William H. Crash Memorial. Yes! So in this vlog, we are going to have another episode of how to pass that subject. And in this particular episode, we are going to talk about how to pass biochemistry. So this series aims to help you guys pass that medical school course by giving you guys some tips and tricks and some of the references that I use that helped me pass that medical school course. So in this particular episode, we are going to be focusing on biochemistry. So the video is divided into two parts. The first one being some of the tips and tricks that I will share with you guys on how I survived biochem. And the second part is going to be some of the references that I used for biochemistry. So now we're going to talk about some of the tips and tricks that I will share with you guys. The first one is going to be take the laboratory aspect of biochemistry seriously. Some schools do take into account your performance in the lab and for example, in St. Luke's, 30% of our biochemistry mark is based on your lab work. So it consists of the lab exams and the lab reports and yeah, basically those two. So if you think you're not good enough to memorize all those enzymes, the pathways, and all the things that biochemistry is offering in the lecture aspect of biochemistry, then I suggest that you do your best in maximizing your laboratory grade. So the next tip is that you don't have to memorize all the enzymes, the pathways, or the interrelationship of the pathways. Just know the major aspects of it, like for example, the rate limiting steps or for example, what aspect of that pathway uses ATP. So for the next step, since we're talking about pathways and stuff like that, it will help you so much if you have like a diagram that will guide you. As a visual learner myself, it's easier for me to imagine things during the exam if I've seen like a diagram or if I drew a diagram beforehand like as a reviewer or something because it's easier to like track oh which pathway yields to this or which pathway is like related to this pathway kind of thing so i feel like diagrams will help especially in the processes in biochemistry so the next tip is actually you asking your professors what reference they use because there are a lot of references for biochemistry which you will see later on when i talk about the references that i used but it's very important for you to know what the major reference of your professors are because there are sometimes discrepancies in the books depending on which edition they are already in. But yeah, you have to know which major reference your professors are using because sometimes they base the facts for the exam from the particular reference. So you have to know that at least. So the last is actually to use the right reference because there are a lot of available references out there. But lucky you, I'm gonna share some of the references that I used in biochemistry which I think helped me pass that course. So the first reference that we are going to talk about is Mark's Basic Medical Biochemistry, A Clinical Approach. This book actually explains all the concepts really well. It makes the hard concepts easier to understand and I feel like if you make this as your main reference for biochemistry, then you will be able to pass biochemistry. However, one of the disadvantages that I saw is that it is sometimes too long to read because it explains the concepts with every single detail you need, which is a good thing. But I feel like as a medical student, I saw it as a disadvantage because it's pretty long. And as you guys know or will know in the future, we don't have that much time. That's why we sometimes go with the summary. But if you have a lot of time and if you want to start during the summer reading about biochemistry, then this reference is the right reference for you. So the next reference that we are going to talk about is Lippincott's Illustrated Biochemistry. So I personally love this book because it explains the concepts well as well, just like Marx. But the plus for this book is that it has a summary at the end of each chapter and the summary is in the form of like a mind map. So as a visual learner, I love it so much because you can actually just like print or copy that page and you can have that as a quick reference or a cheat sheet before the exam so that you can study like the major concepts few hours before the exam. 
so that's basically a bonus plus it gives you guys colorful and high yield illustrations as well so one of the disadvantages of lip and cuts illustrated biochemistry is that it is not as comprehensive as the Marx biochemistry book. It leaves some of the important stuff unmentioned or like it doesn't discuss it. And I'm not sure why, but I found some concepts missing. So you can use this book as a main reference, but you have to know what your professors really want you to study. And sometimes it is not a part of this book, so you have to find another resource for that. But aside from that, this is a good book. So the third one is going to be the BRS Biochemistry. So this is again part of the BRS family and it is meant for those who are taking the board exam already or the licensure exam. But it could help freshy students like you. However, I wouldn't recommend it as a main reference because sometimes it's hard to understand because it just gives you like facts and it doesn't really explain how the things come together and stuff like that but you know you can just check it out and see if it works for you and if you like how it's laid out then I feel like it would help you but I wouldn't recommend it as much as I recommend some of the other references that I'm going to talk about and that I've talked about already. So the next reference is pretest biochemistry. This is actually a very comprehensive study material that mixes all the concepts all together. This is very helpful especially when you're studying for your final exams at the end of the year because as I have mentioned, it integrates the concepts all together and asks you one question that will assess your knowledge about the basic concepts of biochemistry. In addition to that, it actually explains why the answer is like that. So it discusses the question and the answer at the same time in detail so it will help you understand the concepts even more. So one of the disadvantages that I actually saw, well not really like a disadvantage but I'm talking from a first year point of view is that it has some medical or clinical correlations which is actually a good thing if you are already like fourth year, third year and stuff like that when you're trying to master how biochemistry is related to the diseases but like as a first year student where you have to know just the basic biochemistry stuff then it might be overwhelming so just take note of that so the next reference actually one of my favorites it's first aid basic science or again system so as i have mentioned in my how to pass anatomy and histology video i love this book so much because it's very organized so for example after it divides it into like respiratory cardiovascular and stuff like that once you actually go to respiratory part for example it divides it into like anatomy histology embryology and physiology so it's a very organized book and I really love it because it actually gives emphasis to some of the major concepts that you have to know. And yeah, this is basically like very high yield reference. A possible disadvantage is that it's not really as comprehensive as other books but I feel like as a first year medical student, everything that you have to know is in here. Also, it is better if you guys study this book with the last reference that I'm going to share with you guys, which is the First Aid U.S. Emily Step 1. As I mentioned in my previous video, it has great mnemonics, it is very high yield, it explains concepts really well, it has great illustrations, it is basically something that you have to have in your first year of medical school. This, however, is not good as a main reference, but it's a good go-to reference, especially when you're studying for an exam or like a few weeks before the exam. So I suggest that you study this first aid USMLE step one and the first aid basic science Oregon systems together for better results. So before we end, I just want to give you guys a disclaimer that this tips and tricks and the references that I used work for me, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it will work for you. So if you have time, try them out first and see whether it's working for you or not because we learn differently. So if it works, then I'm happy to help. If it doesn't, then try to explore other ways or resources that might help you. And if you guys find like a better way or better references, please comment them down below so that we can help each other grow. So aside from that, I hope that you guys can subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave a comment down below. Bye, yours. I'll see you guys on our next vlog.